Mohamed Salah has undoubtedly become a modern day Premier League legend, while also arguably being the greatest and most important Arab athlete of all time. However, his journey to this point has been difficult, with Salah facing many hard points and setbacks in his career. However, through his hard work and sheer dedication, Salah has become one of the greatest players to grace the Premier League. So how did this all come about? Well, let's take a look at the inspirational rise of Mohamed Salah. Mo was born on June 15, 1992 and raised in a small village in Egypt called Nagreek. Throughout his childhood, Mo played football on the streets with his friends, trying to imitate his idols, Zinedine Zidane, Ronaldo Nazario, and Francesco Totti, a player Salah would later play with in his career. Also, when Mo Salah was playing on the streets of his village, his talent started to show, and he ended up playing for the youth setups of local teams called Etihad Basun and Oath Mason Tanta. This was great for Mo, but his footballing career would only really start when he turned 14 years old, and which a scout from the club, Al Mokalun, noticed Salah while coming to watch another child play at one of Mo's games. The scout was very impressed and offered Salah the chance to join the youth team of Al Mokalun. Alun, and of course, with Salah always wanting to be a professional footballer, he accepted this opportunity of a lifetime. This is when Mo Salah's perseverance for his dreams really started to show. Thanks to his family's support, Mo was allowed to frequently miss school in order to attend Al Mokalun's training sessions. In fact, the entire journey of Mo going to training was very time consuming. In total, the journey to training took four and a half hours with a combination of five buses to get there. That means in total for five days a week, Mo Salah had a total of nine hours traveling just to show up for training. It's also said that Salah would frequently come back home at 1am and he will restart the same traveling process the very next day. Salah's dedication to football can just never be taught man. You just gotta respect it. This grind from Salah paid off as well because when he turned 15, he was noticed by the first team manager at the time, Mohamed Radwan, and Salah was moved to the senior squad immediately as a left back. He started to get minutes in the team too as a left back as well, but one game, the staff of the club thought they would try to get Mo Salah higher up the pitch since they noticed he had a good eye for goal and incredible pace. This turned out to be a wise decision because Salah would not stop scoring for the Egyptian club after this. In fact, Salah's hunger to score goals was so large that one time, when Al Mokalun won 4-0 in the game, but Salah didn't score, he sat in the locker room and cried because he didn't score that day. Yeah, things are really starting to make sense when it comes to Mo Salah's dedication to being the best and scoring goals. Anyways, in the 11-12 season, Salah was starting to gain some eyeballs from European clubs due to him balling out in the Egyptian league. Despite that though, the Egyptian league was suspended and cancelled due to the Port Said Stadium riot, which occurred in a game between Al Ali and Al Masri. Long story short, Al Masri ended up beating Al Ali 3-1 in the game, but some of the fans went on the pitch and violently attacked the Ali fans using clubs, stones, knives, bottles, etc. And this led to 500 people being injured and 74 killed. A really sad story indeed. However, with no football happening for the Egyptian players, a friendly for the under-23 national team was scheduled to play FC Basel, one of the biggest clubs in Switzerland. During the game, Salah came on as a second half substitute where he would end up scoring two goals, helping the under-23 Egypt team beat FC Basel 4-3. This performance from Salah had the Basel coach staff and not. So much so that they invited Salah to train with the Swiss club for a week, where Salah would obviously impress, later signing for Basel. Now Salah was filling in the role of Shiren Shakiri, the Switzerland golden boy coming out of Basel. Crazy how life works, because many years later, Shakiri ended up being the backup for Salah at Liverpool, where before it was kind of the opposite. Anyways, life at the beginning of Salah's European chapter was difficult. He moved to a new foreign land, extremely far away from his family and countrymen, and also did that without knowing Switzerland's language, culture, etc. With this, things might be difficult for Salah to adapt, right? Wrong, because the young Salah adapted just fine in his first season for the Swiss club. This is due to the fact that Salah played an important role for Basel and them comfortably winning the Swiss Super League Championship, with Mo scoring 5 goals and 4 assists in 29 games in the league. Despite this though, Salah would make his mark and start to increase his global reputation in the Europa League, where Basel were having a dark horse run to the trophy. FC Basel were gliding by in the European competition until the quarterfinals, where they would have to play Tottenham Hotspur, a big 6 Premier League club. Salah shined in this game though, with him scoring an important goal in the second leg, and also a penalty in the shootout, upsetting the London club big time. Spurs choking when it matters. It's a tale as old as time. Anyways, he even played against Chelsea in the semifinals, his future club, where he would score a goal against them at the Stamford Bridge. Sadly, the Dark Horse run ended in the semis, with Basel losing 5-2 on aggregate, but Salah's performances weren't going to be forgotten by the blue side of London. To top off the 12-13 season for Salah, he ended up winning the Swiss Player of the Year for his performances, indicating how great he was for the club. Adapting to the European lifestyle for Salah wasn't difficult whatsoever. Moving on to the 13-14 season, Mo Salah would continue where he left off for Basel. Not only that, he had to play Chelsea again, but this time in the Champions League group stages. Told you Chelsea weren't going to forget about him. Anyways, in these Champions League games, Salah managed to bag two against his future club, only giving Chelsea more of a reason why they should sign him. And finally, Chelsea pulled the trigger. That's because despite Basel wanting to keep Salah until the end of the season, the pull from Chelsea was just too much. And despite heavy interest from Liverpool due to Brendan Rodgers desperately wanting him, Jose Mourinho gave Salah a call, and that all but ensured Chelsea's success in convincing the Egyptian king to join 
joined the London club for around 11 million pounds. Now at 22 years old, Mo Salah was officially playing in one of the biggest European leagues in the world, and for one of the best clubs in the world, with Chelsea winning the Champions League two seasons prior. Playing at this elite level of football was really rare for someone coming out of Egypt, but Mo Salah was breaking boundaries in football that nobody has ever seen before. Additionally, Mo Salah's start at Chelsea wasn't even that bad either, with him scoring his first goal for the Blues against Arsenal in the London Derby, and even scoring a goal and winning a penalty in Chelsea's 3-0 win over Stoke City. In total, in Salah's first half of the season at Chelsea, he got two goals and two assists in 10 games. Those aren't crazy numbers, but they're not bad, especially from someone coming from a much weaker league. Unfortunately though, things did not get better for Mo Salah at all with his time at Chelsea. In the first half of the 14-15 campaign, Mo Salah only took part in three games in the Premier League. Eight minutes against Swansea, four minutes against Crystal Palace, and 18 minutes against Tottenham after three months of no game time in the league. There could be a ton of reasons for this. Mo Salah might have been losing confidence in himself, potentially not showing his best in training, or even Jose Mourinho having enough of him and didn't want to give him a chance anymore. It literally could have been anything, but it was probably the last reason. With it being pretty known that Jose Mourinho wasn't impressed by Salah anymore, and that one time he might have made him cry in the locker room. Anyhow, the fact of the matter was, Mo Salah's time at Chelsea was definitely over, and he needed to go somewhere else to revive his career, fast, or else he will be a forgotten player in football. Luckily, an opportunity came knocking, and Fiorentina were willing to take a chance on Salah, offering him a half a year loan deal, which Mo Salah gladly accepted. Now, Salah making the move away from Chelsea seemed to be the smart idea, because their team was seriously stacked at the time, with them winning the Premier League later that year. There was no way Jose Mourinho was going to give Salah more chances in a heated title race. Anyways, moving on to Fiorentina, Mo Salah chose the number 74 during his time at the club. This wasn't because all the good numbers were taken or whatever, but instead it was to honor the victims of the Port Said Stadium riot that I mentioned earlier. Anyhow, it's safe to say that Fiorentina's gamble of signing Salah paid off, because Mo began showing signs of how good he could actually be in football. He made his impact known with Fiorentina, with him getting a total of 9 goals and 4 assists in 26 appearances for the Italian club. Some of these goals include a winner against Tottenham in the Europa League, again, a winner against Inter Milan, and 2 goals against Juventus in the Coppa Italia semi-final first leg. These goals and impressive performances from Salah made him a fan favorite at Fiorentina, and the club recognized that, and they made him aware that they wanted to sign him permanently. However, Salah, recognizing that he was making waves in the Serie A, realized that there could be a better opportunity elsewhere, and when Roma came calling, Salah accepted a one-year loan deal from them instead for the 2015-16 season. Fiorentina were outraged with this decision, with them even complaining to FIFA that Chelsea breached their agreement and wrongfully allowed Salah to join Roma. But Chelsea and Salah were cleared of any wrongdoing. Anyway, Salah took the number 11 shirt for Roma and also became a fan favorite at the capital during his time there. Also, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Salah was able to play with one of his idols, Francesco Totti, who simply refused to retire despite him getting older and older. Anyhow, Salah's first season at Roma was probably the most stable his career has ever been since his time at Basel. He was finally going to be able to enjoy a full season of staying at one club and finally getting some significant game time. And Salah did not take this opportunity for granted either, because in his first season for Roma, Salah managed to bag 15 goals and 7 assists in 42 games across all competitions. In hindsight, this season could have been the one where Mo Salah turned himself into a beast that we all know he is today. Not only that, Serie A is known for being very tactical, so of course it's only natural that Salah's maturity and understanding of the game was only going to grow. Additionally, he turned himself into an elite goal scorer by practicing during and after training, and this led him to score some really important goals in the 15-16 season, like scoring against the likes of AC Milan, Sassuolo, and even against Fiorentina in both of the games Roma played against them. Overall, thanks to Salah's amazing performances, he was awarded with the club's 2015-16 Player of the Season award, and was even offered a permanent offer, where Salah accepted for 15 million euros. Mo Salah only continued to shine for Roma, with him bagging a total of 19 goals and 15 assists in 41 games in the 16-17 season, helping Roma finish second place in the league, only 4 points behind Serie A winners Juventus. Salah scored important goals yet again, like a hat-trick in a 3-0 win over Bologna, and even a goal against Lyon in the Champions League knockout stages. Overall, with Salah's impressive stats, it was only natural that even bigger clubs throughout Europe were going to take notice, and one of them was of course Liverpool, the English club that tried to sign him a few years prior. Liverpool's upcoming project was exciting, with them already having the striker position fulfilled with Roberto Firmino, and the left wing position fulfilled thanks to Sadio Mane. Jurgen Klopp wanted another right winger to come through, which is why Salah was being looked at. However, reportedly, Salah wasn't even the initial first option for Liverpool. In fact, before looking at Salah, Klopp and the Liverpool staff were more eager to sign the likes of Christian Pulisic, in which Borussia Dortmund refused to let him go, Julian Draxler, who opted to join PSG from Wolfsburg instead, and Julian Brandt, who decided to stay at Bayer Leverkusen instead of joining Liverpool in fear of not having much game time. So basically, reportedly, Salah was the fourth option. However, Michael Edwards, the old sporting director of Liverpool, pushed for the club to sign Mo Salah, and Jurgen Klopp later agreed, eventually securing Salah's signature to the club for an initial fee of £36.5 million, and that could later rise to £43 million, a club record fee at the time. Real quick before we get on with Salah's first time at Liverpool, 
pool, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it and it means a lot, so thank you. And also, if you guys can, follow my Twitter and Instagram, both at Nabuto, if you just want to hear my thoughts on football games, transfers, and overall, just to get to know me more. So if you want to, feel free to hit me up with that follow. Thank you. Anyways, back to Mo Salah joining Liverpool. Many people had their doubts of him joining the club. After all, Mo Salah has already been in the Prem before, and despite not having the best game time, he was overall underwhelming for Chelsea. So who says after only a few years, Mo Salah will be ready for Premier League football again? Well, Mo Salah answered this the best he could, on the pitch. That's because in Salah's first season for Liverpool, he became an instant hit. When the Premier League was rebranded around 25 years ago, the highest goal tally for anyone in the league in a single season was 31 goals, and only three players ever reached that goal tally. Alan Shearer, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Liverpool's own Luis Suarez. So beating this goal record in his first season would be insane. Almost unimaginable, right? Well, it happened alright, because in Mo Salah's first season in the Premier League, he got 32 goals and 11 assists in 36 league games, beating the Premier League goal record by one goal. Also in all competitions in his first season, Salah managed to score 44 goals and 16 assists in 52 games. Some of these goals were actually really important in the season and also came against some really good opposition. For example, he scored an assisted a goal in a 4-0 victory over Arsenal, a goal against Bournemouth, which led him to become the joint second fastest player to reach 20 goals for Liverpool, with Salah only having 26 appearances at the time, and a hat-trick in a 5-0 win over Watford, his first hat-trick for the club. Then, the most important goal Salah has scored for Liverpool in the 17-18 season finally arrived. Liverpool were drawn in Manchester City in the Champions League quarterfinals, who were currently the best team in England at the time, and still are now to be honest. However, this was no match for Mohamed Salah, because he scored in both of the legs against Man City, the more crucial one in the second leg with that iconic celebration, helping Liverpool beat Man City in the Champions League. Not only that, he scored a brace in a 5-2 win in the Champions League semi-final first leg over his former club Roma, becoming the first player from Africa and the first Liverpool player to score 10 goals in a single campaign in the tournament. These impressive goals led Salah to the Champions League final against Real Madrid in his first season for Liverpool. Before that occurred though, he was awarded the PFA Players Player of the Year award in his first season as well, which is absolutely mind-blowing, and also the Premier League Golden Boot as well, obviously. Sadly though, in the Champions League final, Mo Salah's historic season would end in misery, with Sergio Ramos injuring Salah in the 30th minute, knocking Salah out of the game and in tears. And also thanks to the disaster class from Karius, Liverpool lost the final 3-1. To make matters worse, the World Cup was only a couple weeks away, and Salah got an injury that nobody expected, and that could have kept him out of the entire tournament, a tournament that Egypt worked so hard to qualify for after 28 years. Before we talk about the 2018 World Cup though, we have to talk about how Egypt even qualified for it. And of course, it's all thanks to Mohamed Salah. You see, Egypt desperately needed a win over Congo to make it to the World Cup. However, in the 87th minute, Congo equalized in the game, essentially knocking Egypt out of the World Cup qualification. However, at the very last minute of the game, Egypt won a penalty, giving hope to the Egyptians that they might make it back to the world's competition. The Egyptian fans were already celebrating hard, providing more pressure for Salah to score this. However, as we all know, Mohamed Salah has ice in his veins, because without hesitation, he slots the penalty into the net, sending Egypt to the World Cup, erupting the fans into joy that they never felt before. Mo Salah, right at that very moment, became an icon and legend for Egypt. Now let's go back to the World Cup. Egypt overall disappointed at the tournament. Mo Salah did end up making the roster, but he was out in the first game against Uruguay, where Egypt would be defeated by a last minute goal from Jimenez. Then in the next game against Russia, the hosts, Egypt was defeated 3-1, but Salah did bag a penalty, helping Egypt score their first goal in the World Cup after 28 years. Surprisingly, in the last game, Egypt lost to Saudi Arabia 2-1, even though Mohamed Salah gave them the lead, meaning Egypt finished the World Cup with a grand total of zero points. Regardless, the fact that they even qualified for the World Cup is an accomplishment in itself, and it was all thanks to Mohamed Salah. Now for the 1890 season, vengeance was on Mo Salah's mind. He wanted more than anything to win some trophies this season, especially the Champions League, something he barely got to take a part in thanks to Sergio Ramos. And Mo Salah went crazy in terms of goal contributions in order for Liverpool to win some silverware, because in the end, his 27 goals and 12 assists in 52 games proved to be pivotal in this campaign for the Reds. Throughout the season though, Mo Salah was accomplishing a lot, like being named on the three-man shortlist for the UEFA Men's Player of the Year, being named for the three-man shortlist for UEFA Forward of the Season, named on another three-man shortlist for Best FIFA Men's Player, and even controversially winning the 2018 FIFA Bushkas Award for his goal against Everton in the Merseyside Derby. Also throughout the season, Mo Salah became the fastest player in Liverpool history to reach 50 goals in all competitions, and also the fastest player to reach 50 Premier League goals, reaching that tally in only 72 games. In the Premier League 2, he scored that goal against Chelsea. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This is also the same season where Mo Salah, towards the end of it, got a concussion in the game against Newcastle, knocking him out of the second leg against Barcelona. Liverpool came in clutch for him though, because their amazing 4-0 comeback saw Mo Salah and the Reds back in the Champions League final, helping Salah reach within distance of the silverware he desperately wanted. Side note, I wore that Mo Salah Barcelona fit for the Champions League final, and this just shows how big of a Salah fan I am. Anyway, Salah was pivotal in the final against Tottenham Hotspur, with his penalty in the second minute being a huge reason why Liverpool beat Tottenham 2-0, winning the Champions League the season after they lost it to Real Madrid. 
Mo Salah really had a redemption story. Oh, you love to see it. And the next 1920 season, Mo Salah would enjoy another incredible campaign, with him getting 23 goals and 13 assists in 48 games. Not only that, this would be a season with a ton of silverware. In the UEFA Super Cup final, Mohamed Salah scored Liverpool's fifth and ultimate decisive penalty in a 5 4 shootout win against Chelsea, helping Mo Salah win the Super Cup, of course. Then at the Club World Cup, Liverpool beat Flamengo 1 0 in the final, helping Salah win that tournament and also the golden ball of the tournament as well. And then, thanks to Liverpool's iconic 99 point season, Mo Salah won the Premier League, playing a huge role in ending Liverpool's title drought of 30 years in this COVID infested season. So, in the 1920 campaign, Mo Salah scored a ton of goals and won three trophies. Not bad for his first three seasons at the club, huh? The 2021 season was a bad one for Liverpool though, since they had a terrible injury crisis at the time, but Mo Salah still enjoyed a good season individually. In fact, in the 51 games he played in, he scored 31 goals and got 6 assists. Salah broke more records for himself in this season as well, with him becoming the first player to score a hat-trick for Liverpool in the first Premier League match of the season since 1988, scoring his 100th goal for Liverpool in all competitions in a game against Everton, becoming the fastest player to reach 100 goals for Liverpool in top-flight English football, and also becoming the 5th Liverpool player to score more than 20 goals in all competitions in 4 consecutive seasons. Like I said though, it wasn't a good season for Liverpool as a whole, so no silverware was won. I can't say the same for the 21-22 season though, because it was looking to be a very historic campaign for Liverpool, with them eyeing up the quadruple, and Mo Salah's 31 goals and 16 assists in 51 games being a huge reason for that. It was looking good for Mo Salah to having another historic season, with him in the season claiming the top spot of being the highest scoring African player in Premier League history, surpassing Didier Drogba. However, the historic Liverpool season kind of fell apart. Despite Mo Salah winning his third golden boot, and also the Playmaker Award in that same season, Aston Villa crumbling from 2-0 up against Man City in the last game to lose 3-2, ended the title host for Liverpool to win the Premier League. Also, Liverpool made the Champions League final again against Real Madrid, but lost 1-0 thanks to Vinicius Jr.'s goal. However, it wasn't all for nothing though, because Mo Salah played a role in helping Liverpool defeat Chelsea in both the Carabao Cup final and the FA Cup final. So Liverpool and Salah won the two trophies they haven't won in a very long time. Prior to the poor 22-23 season, Mo Salah signed a three-year contract extension with Liverpool for another three years, becoming the club's highest paid player ever with £350,000 a week until at least 2025. It was a poor season for Liverpool though, with them finishing fifth place, placing them outside of a Champions League spot. However, they did end up winning the Community Shield, meaning Mo Salah has won everything he could at his time at Liverpool, cementing his legendary status with the club. Additionally, in this poor Liverpool season, he got 30 goals and 16 assists and 51 games for the club. So individually, he did pretty alright. Moving on, this 23-24 season is shaping up to be a Salah all-timer season for Liverpool though, since he didn't join all Etihad over the summer for a record salary fee. So far in the 10 games he's played for Liverpool at the time of me recording this, he's got 6 goals and 4 assists, meaning he has a goal contribution for every single Premier League game. That's insane, bruh. Salah is too underrated for being a Premier League legend. He's an all-time GOAT in this league. Overall, Mohamed Salah is clearly an all-time great, not only in the Premier League, but in all of football. He's iconic in the Arab world, being the face of them in the public eye, and also being a cultural phenomenon in football as well. He's had his ups and downs in his career, but overall, I would say his career has been a massive success. And this is all thanks to his determined mentality and his amazing physical prowess that he's achieved so much in the sport and for Liverpool. Ever since he joined my favorite club, he's become my favorite player right now, and probably of all time. So Mohamed Salah, in my eyes, you're the best ever Liverpool player ever, and for you blessing this club, I'm forever grateful. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And remember to follow my Instagram and Twitter as well. The links are in my YouTube description. And last but not least, if you want to learn more about a future Premier League legend, Julian Alvarez, you definitely want to check out this video right here. You won't regret it.